Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we are revisiting the battle between the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti and Radeon RX Vega 56. Now, I realize there's probably not that many of you that are super excited about graphics cards right now, at least the ones we currently have on sale, and that is because they're still quite overpriced, perhaps more importantly, they are old and about to be replaced. Despite that though, I wanted to provide some updated results, especially since I haven't done any in-depth GeForce versus Radeon comparisons in 2018 yet. Both Nvidia and AMD have released a number of driver updates this year, which improve performance or at least have claimed to, though most of those claims have been for games that have been released this year also. So game ready drivers in other words. That said though, I'm still really keen to see if much or anything has changed in the last six months with the battle between these two particular GPUs. Last time out, 35 games were tested at three resolutions, though the focus was mostly on the 1440p numbers, and here the GTX 1070 Ti was 6% faster when comparing the stock out of the box performance. For this update, we have 25 games, all of which have been tested exclusively at 1440p, and we'll be testing both GPUs stock as well as overclocked. So it will be interesting to see if AMD's made up any ground here, for this comparison, I will be using our standard Core i7 8700K GPU test system clocked at 5GHz along with 32GB of DDR4-3200 memory. Representing the green team is the MSI GTX 1070 Ti Gaming X, and for the red team, well, the red team themselves with their reference Vega 56 model, because I don't seem to be able to get anyone to send me a custom designed Vega graphics card. So with that, let's get to the results. First up, we have the Assassin's Creed Origins results, and here Vega 56 takes a bit of a pounding. The 1% low figure was 18% lower out of the box, and that margin was only reduced to 16% once overclocked. The average frame rate was a little more competitive, but still not a good result for the red team here. Next up, we have Armor 3, and here Vega 56 does do quite well, edging out the GTX 1070 Ti, both stock and overclocked. Not huge margins by any means, but the Radeon GPU was seen to be up to 5% faster. Moving on to Star Wars Battlefront 2, the game that grossly missed sales targets and EA blamed the poor performance on the loot crate controversy. I wonder if Disney can use that excuse for Solo. Anyway, despite poor sales, Battlefront 2 is actually a really fun game, and a really well made game at that, and it plays really well on both AMD and Nvidia hardware. Stock performance was much the same, while the GTX 1070 Ti managed a 5% win once overclocked. Before everyone jumped ship to Battlefield 5 in October, we've still got time to feature Battlefield 1 in a few more videos yet. This is another example of a well-made title, and again, we see very competitive performance. That said, the Radeon GPU was able to deliver higher frame rates, both stock and overclocked, though the overclock numbers were very similar. Please note, for Deus Ex Mankind Divided, we're not using the built-in benchmark, and while the GTX 1070 Ti has been tested using DirectX 11, Vega 56 has been tested using DX12. Again, we see very competitive performance. Out of the box, Vega 56 was up to 7% faster, but just 3% faster once both GPUs were overclocked. Moving on, we have some Rallycross action with Dirt 4, and we see that Vega 56 has gone full Ken Block Gymkhana mode on the GTX 1070 Ti as it drifts circles around the GeForce GPU. Increasing the anti-aliasing mode to MSAA does heavily reduce the margin seen here using CMAA, but you do get much better frame rates with both GPUs using this method, while the visual quality isn't noticeably different. With both GPUs overclocked, Vega 56 was 37% faster for the frame time result and 17% faster for the average frame rate. Don't expect to see margins like this too often, but still a great result for the red team. Next up we have F1 2017 and here the GeForce GPU had no trouble finding the racing line and with maximum grip was able to edge out Vega 56 delivering around 10% more performance both stock and overclocked. If Harbour Unboxed was like Far Cry 5, we'd take you on an awesome benchmark adventure, then just randomly interrupt you with unrelated content before knocking you out cold and having you wake up in a wooded location. Thankfully though, Harbour Unboxed isn't like Far Cry 5. So getting back to it, here we see out of the box that Vega 56 was a little faster, but the margin was closed up once both GPUs were overclocked, so competitive performance in this title. Next up we have everyone's favourite new cartoon series, Fortnite. Well, everyone except for AMD. The Unreal Engine really is a big middle finger to AMD, but at least Ryzen is starting to perform a little better in this title. 
The Radeon GPUs though are still well down on where you'd probably expect them to be and as a result the GTX 1070 Ti was up to 27% faster. Frostpunk is one of the newest titles that we've tested with, and it's fair to say this one doesn't play too nicely with AMD hardware. Out of the box, the GTX 1070 Ti was 26% faster for the average frame rate, and then once overclocked, extended that lead out to a whopping 41%. Moving on to Grand Theft Auto 5, and well, no surprises here. Upon release, Vega 56 was basically only on par with an overclocked GTX 1060, and today we see that little improvement appears to have been made. This means the GTX 1070 Ti was anywhere from 25 to 40% faster. Hitman is another title we've tested using DirectX 11 for Nvidia and DirectX 12 for AMD. Stock the GTX 1070 Ti was 9% faster, but once both GPUs were overclocked, that margin was reduced to just 4%. Another title released this year is Kingdom Come Deliverance, and here we see very competitive performance out of the box. However, the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti's superior overclocking headroom pushes it ahead by a 9% margin, once both GPUs are fully wound up. Fans of Project Cars will want a GeForce GPU, and although the second installment in this series hasn't been as brutal as the first for AMD, it's still pretty bad. Here the GTX 1070 Ti was 17% faster out of the box and then 21% faster once overclocked, so complete and utter track domination for the green team. Out of the box, we see pretty competitive performance in Prey. The GTX 1072 Ti was 8% faster here, though that's not nearly as significant as the 17% performance advantage it enjoys once overclocked. Last time out, PUBG provided the GTX 1072 Ti with its biggest win. Since then, the game has left early access, and it seems support for AMD GPUs has drastically improved. Although the GTX 1072 Ti was still 11% faster out of the box, previously we found it to be 28% faster. Admittedly though, we're not testing the exact same section of the game, but six months ago, AMD was a lot slower in every section of the game that we looked into. The GTX 1072i does extend its lead to 15% once overclocked, but still, this time around, we do see very respectable performance from the Vega 56 graphics card. Moving on, Quake Champions uses the DirectX 11 API, so it runs very nicely on NVIDIA hardware, and here we see the GTX 1070Ti providing 12% more frames when stock and 13% more once overclocked. Then we have Rainbow Six Siege, and as you might have expected, neither GPU has an issue in this title at 1440p using the ultra quality settings. That said, the GTX 1070 Ti had to be overclocked to match the stock Vega 56 card, while overclocking produced a further 7% performance. Sniper Elite 4 was tested exclusively using the DirectX 12 API, and here the GTX 1070 Ti had a slight performance advantage, delivering 4% more frames out of the box and 8% more once overclocked. In case you're wondering, here's the sixth last game tested. Not sure why I pointed that out, so let's just move along. Middle Earth Shadow of War saw the GTX 1070 Ti deliver just 4% more frames on average when stock, and surprisingly once overclocked, both GPUs delivered the exact same result. For gamers wanting to put those 50 million mouse click claims to the test, I recommend checking out Vermintide 2. Then, for the smoothest experience, you will want the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti, though I should note that Vega 56 does also do very well, and was just 7% slower out of the box. Still overclocked, the GeForce GPU did provide 10% more performance, and that'll certainly come in handy as you madly click away like a Red Bull-infused toddler playing Minecraft. For a different kind of Warhammer experience, we have Total War Warhammer 2, and for this title, we've used the DirectX 11 API. Here, the GTX 1070 Ti was only a smidgen faster out of the box, but was 9% faster once both GPUs were overclocked. Almost wrapping things up, we have Ghost Recon Wildlands, and here the GTX 1070 Ti and Vega 56 GPUs do go toe-to-toe -to -toe in their stock out-of-the-box configuration. That said, as we often find once overclocked, the GTX 1070 Ti has the upper hand, and here it was now 9% faster. Second last game tested, The Witcher 3, and we have Hairworks enabled, but not maxed out for those glorious, free-flowing Tech Jesus locks. Both stock GPUs average 60 FPS, and then again we see comparable performance when overclocked, so a very even battle indeed. Nvidia has made a number of performance improvements in 2017's Wolfenstein to the new Colossus. Upon release, Vega 56 was able to beat the GTX 1080 in this Vulcan-based game. Today, though, it's a very different story. 
Performance is now far more competitive and shockingly the GTX 1070 Ti is now a little faster than Vega 56, so Nvidia really has made great strides in this title. Of course nothing has changed when it comes to power consumption, but here are the numbers anyway for those of you who missed the original content. Stock we see that Vega 56 pushed total system consumption 9% higher, which isn't that significant. However, once overclocked, the results are very significant and incredibly Vega 56 is now pushing total system consumption 29% higher. This is why Vega 56 owners prefer to undervolt Vega to save power while achieving stock-like performance. Okay, so we just saw a classic bit of AMD and NVIDIA back and forth, and we do know based on testing done six months ago that the GTX 1070 Ti is the faster of these two graphics cards, but the question is, has that margin changed today? To find out, let's take a quick look at the average performance from the 25 games tested. Okay, so not a lot has changed. This time the GTX 1070 Ti was 5% faster, not a huge margin by any means, Again, we see that the real advantage of the GTX 1070 Ti is the overclocking headroom, and with both overclocked to the max, the GeForce GPU was now 8% faster. Here's a quick look at how they stack up in the 25 games tested in stock trim. The GTX 1070 Ti enjoyed big wins in Frostpunk, GTA 5, Fortnite, and Project Cars 2, while it was only notably slower in Dirt 4 and Rainbow Six Siege, and I suppose the good news for Nvidia here being that frame rates are still exceptionally high in those titles anyway. Overclock things look much the same, the GTX 1070 Ti's lead overall is just extended a little further. Here it's now 8% faster on average at the 1440p tested resolution. Granted, 8% isn't a huge margin, and the margin itself doesn't really mean that much without a price attached to it. In a fantasy land where graphics cards could be had for or at least near the MSRP, the GTX 1070 Ti would cost 13% more than the Vega 56 graphics card, and technically that does make AMD's product the better value buy. Anyway, because we unfortunately live in the real world, or a matrix type simulation, whichever you prefer, neither the GTX 1070 Ti nor Vega 56 are available at the MSRP. Though it has to be said, prices are improving, particularly for the GeForce models. A graphics card sporting the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti GPU can be had for just under $500 US right now, though most are priced a little above $500 US. Still, that's only about $50 over the suggested price, and compared to where we have been recently, that's pretty good. Unfortunately though, Vega 56 pricing still high as a kite, and getting one for $500 US would be considered a real treat. At the time of making this video, there is just a single card selling for under $600 US, with everything else priced above. So if you're going after a more high-end type graphics card, the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti really is the best option right now. Of course, this video was more about what, if any, steps AMD or NVIDIA has made over the past six months with their drivers, and overall things appear to be much the same. It is difficult though to do a direct comparison as the testing hardware has changed a little and many of the games have been patched and upgraded multiple times and of course so has Windows 10, not to mention all the security updates which have impacted performance. Hopefully we'll know very soon what's on the way from NVIDIA and fingers crossed we learn something this week at Computex. If you're watching this video as it went live there is a good chance I'm on a plane headed for Taiwan at the moment and in the next few days we'll know what if anything NVIDIA is announcing at Computex so stick around for that news. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our Discord chat and our monthly live stream. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you next time.